Hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this one, I'm going to start getting into some specialized software that I plan on putting on my new server. It's going to be based upon the concept of virtual machines, or VMs for short. And I'm going to talk about first the theory behind VMs and the software behind it as a general concept. And then I'll get into the specific things that we need to know about the version that I've picked to go onto my new server. So let's get started. But stick around till the end and you'll find out exactly how this all seems to work together. Okay, let's talk about the concept or the term called hypervisors. A hypervisor is a special program that can either be loaded to take over your entire system or to run just as any other application in your system. So let me show you how it's mapped out. There are actually two different types, but I'm going to start with type number two first because that may be more familiar to some of you. So type two also referred to as a hosted hypervisor. Well, in a hosted hypervisor, we have the hardware. Now, the hardware is the PC, which has, you know, whatever processor you have, whatever number of uh, actual threads or CPUs is on that processor, your memory, all your peripherals, everything that makes up what you normally refer to as your computer or PC. Or if it, you're going to set this up as a server, it could be a separate server that does this as well. So running on the hardware, you have an operating system. Now that operating system can be something like Windows 10 or 11. It could be Linux. It could be anything really, including, you know, an Apple type operating system or some other operating system that, you know, may be considered sort of out of the mainstream. Running in this system under the operating system's control is an application called a hypervisor. Now the hypervisor is just a large program. It uses a lot of resources depending on how you configure it, or it can be just running a little bit. It also depends on what the size of your system is to start with. Then the hypervisor has the ability to bring in images and run them as separate little computers called guest operating systems. So you could have a host operating system of Windows, and then you could have a guest operating system of some variant of Linux, or another one that's even a different version of Windows, an earlier or later version than you're running normally. It also becomes what we refer to as a test lab type configuration, where you can go ahead and load pretty much as many of these guest operating systems as your system can support in terms of resources. And that's primarily the processor, number of cores and threads in that processor, the memory, etc. So that's a type 2 hosted hypervisor. A type 1 also referred to as a native hypervisor. Some people call it the bare metal hypervisor because it's going to run in the same kind of hardware. And I'm intentionally putting them here as the same size because let's say that the actual same exact PC with a certain number of uh, processes to it and a certain number of threads and memory and so forth. Let's say that they're exactly the same, the two examples here between a type one and a type two. One big difference. In a type one, we don't have a host operating system. We go right into the hypervisor. The hypervisor takes over the entire system for you and is in fact your operating system. However, it's a special purpose operating system that's extremely stripped down. It itself does not use hardly any of your resources, although it does have a management capability for the resources that you have. So it does copy that from a standard operating system, but its sole purpose is to run guest operating systems. And again, you could put as many of these in your system as your resources provide. In this example, I'm showing four because that's probably very realistic. In the type two case, the operated host operating system itself took some resources to run your memory, your CPUs and so forth. Whereas that is not the case with a bare metal hypervisor. It is so small and shrunk down that it gives you the opportunity to run more guest operating systems and for those guest operating systems to actually run a little bit faster because they won't be sharing that much in terms of resources from the hypervisor itself. Now let's talk about the virtual environment. Each guest operating system has certain characteristics. The first one is, as I mentioned earlier, it shares the hardware processors with other guest operating systems. If you have a multi-core CPU, it can be divided among the various guests. It shares the hardware memory. 
There can be minimum allocations of memory for each guest operating system, and that's all a configuration parameter when you are creating the image within your hypervisor. And they can share attached peripherals. These are things like the GPU, USBs, networks, etc. And then finally, it's all centrally managed and monitored by the hypervisor. Now let's talk quickly about some various hypervisor products that you may have heard about. I'll start again with the Type 2. So you have things like Microsoft Virtual Server, Parallels Workstation Extreme, Parallels Desktop, Pair PC, VirtualBox is one that I did other videos on, so you can go back and take a look at those. That's a Type 2. Virtual Iron, VMware Fusion, VMware Server, Workstation Player, and Windows Virtual PC. Now there are others, I just picked the top ones to put in the list here. Now for Type 1, we have a different set of products available. Some of them sound similar, but they are different products, even if they're from the same vendor. For example, Adios, CP slash CMS, Hyper VKVM, Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization, LDOMS, Oracle Server, Lynx Secure, Pike OS, Proxmox VA, very popular, VMware ESXi, remember that one because that's what the later part of this video is going to focus on, and Zen Server. So those represent the most common type ones, but there are more. There are some others as well. And that brings up a lot of questions about hypervisors in terms of how do we know they're all following the same constructs? How do we know they all have the same security? Well, unfortunately, we don't. So you have to sort of pick a product that suits your needs and trust in the vendor that supplies it. Obviously, if you buy a vendor supplied product that you have to purchase, you're going to be paying money for that. And you may get support for it in a large vendor you have the better chance of having a real solid system, to be honest with you. If you pick some freeware, well, it wouldn't cost you much, if anything, but keep in mind you won't have the support for it, and there could be questions raised about certain features like its security. So now let's move on to the VMware ESXi product that, as of right now, that's what I plan on putting on my VMware server. Thank you.